Yes, people, why football here? And now that we've seen a few games from each team in the Premier League season and the, and the international break is almost over, it's my turn now to rank the ambitions for each team because we've had a little free trial, a little inclination as to what each team is about, if they're good, bad, and I'm going to give my ranking as to what their realistic ambition for the Premier League finish should be this season. We've got all the teams here, all 20. I've got a tier list with title challenge, fight for top four, get Europe, mid-table, survive. Of course, only five kind of rankings. I'll get best possible, whichever one suits them best, for like their realistic ambition for this season. If you're new around here, please consider subscribing on my Road 600 and leaving the comment section down below if you disagree with any of these I did, if you agree with any, and what your favourite team uh, you believe their ambition should be for this season. So, I'm going to go into order that is in this tier list, and it starts with Liverpool. And for me, Liverpool have to be title challengers. They have got big Virgil van Dijk back. So... If you've got him back, you have to. <laughs> you have to fight for the title, in my opinion. He's one of the best players in the league. The best centre-back, definitely. You've also got Mane, Salah. They drew against Chelsea, of course. I think Chelsea were the better team that day. But they did get the get a point from there. Seven points to start the season. And look, they've they got to be fighting for the title now after they got um, top four last season. Next, Man City. Pfft, title challenge. It's literally coming in the order. What, what can I say? They've got the best squad depth in the league. Their second team could probably fight for the title the best players around. They should have signed the striker, in my opinion. That is why I'm not putting them as favourites to win it. But they'll still be title challenges going all the way. They sweep teams for fun. They literally make teams look average at best. Yeah, Man City title challenges. Chelsea also title challenges. Literally coming in order. Um, what can I say about Chelsea? I predicted them to win the league at the start of the season. Everyone was like, oh no, Man City. Uh, I put them to win the league and now, now everyone's changing heads. Oh, Chelsea are favourites now. Chelsea are favourites. They beat Arsenal. We were dead that day, let's not lie. They got a point at Liverpool with 10 men. That is underrated. And they were dominating that first half until Reese James got the red card. If that was Arsenal there that got 10 men, we would have crumbled and lost 5-1 that game. They stuck together. Liverpool didn't even really create anything with the extra man. It was They, they were kind of just passing for the sake of it and they got a 1-1 draw at Anfield with 10 men for 45 minutes. That is the stuff of champions. So Chelsea title challenger for me, champions, as I predicted a few weeks ago. Man United as well. I would have put them in fight top four, but honestly, the Cristiano, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo addition, that has just sent them well up the table for me. They have to title change now. You've literally got Ronaldo. And the thing with Ronaldo is like he's he's getting on in age. Of course he's fit. He's like one he's one of the most athletic players, one of the most athletic footballers, sportsmen in across everything in the world. So of course he can stay in his physical, um peak physical ability for a long time, but He's getting on in age. So if you want to fight for the title, it's got to be now or next season, to be honest. I think they have to title challenge. Now, Leicester City, for me, is fight for top four for Leicester. They always seem to be there and they just crumble like the last few weeks of the season. So for me, they just got to fight for top four. Do I think they'll break in? Not necessarily. I think these four teams are locks for top four, to be fair. But Leicester at least need to fight for it because they've got, they've got good squad now. Brendan Rodgers is a hell of a manager. and I think they can do enough to fight for top four. Arsenal, my team, awful start to the season, awful. For me, it's get Europe, to be honest. It is get, it is the, the ambition is just get Europe, whether it's conference, Europa League. And it's sad to see because there was days under Wenger where we would literally get, top four would be a guarantee. And it was like, can we try and win the league? And then we'd moan when we get top four or fourth or third. We're like, ah, oh, we wanted to challenge. We're finishing four thirds. Now, we're, there's, it's a, Top four is a pipe dream. It is an absolute pipe dream for us. I'd snap your hand off for top four tomorrow. But if we can get Europe this season and salvage, that would be good, big for me. Less so Conference League, more so actual Europa League football. But yeah, it's got to be ambition is get Europe. Everton as well, get Europe for me as well. Everton always seems to underachieve. They've got a decent squad there. They've got a very decent squad, but I just don't think they're right to fight top four yet because you can't go from nothing to then fight top four. They need to at least get the Europe branch um, first and hopefully they can get Europe. Tottenham, I was going to put get Europe, but after these first three games, it's got to be fight for top four, no? They've won their first three games. It's t tough. Man City at home, won. Wolves away, tough game, they won. Watford at home, they won. They're winning games, conceded zero goals so far this season. So they're looking good under Nuno. Do they have the depth to last for a title challenge? Not in my opinion, but... Good starts the season for Spurs. I think they've got to fight for top four now, to be honest with you, the way they've started. Wolves, oh, for me, I, I think for Wolves, it is going to be a, or oh, I think, new manager. I'm going to put mid-table. I'm teetering between mid-table and survive. 
because of course they do have a new manager but at the end of the day their Wolves squad is good they've got a good squad they've got a Portuguese heavy squad the new manager of course is adjustment period they've they started a bit slow they were unlucky not to get at least get a point versus Man United last weekend but for me I'm going to put them in mid-table but if, if they if they can just survive this season as well I, I'm confident they will but if they can, then they'll push on under that Bruno Lage, who I think has got a potential. Aston Villa, it's got to be get Europe. They lost the, one of their best players, well, their best player in Jack Grealish for 100 million, and they invested it wisely. Danny Ings, great Premier League striker, veteran of the league. Buendia, great under Norwich. Uh, Leon Bailey, I'm excited to see him. He's looking like a trickster out on the wings. I think for Aston Villa, if they get get Europe, that's an excellent season for them. West Ham United, you know what? Fight for top four. West Ham United, they lost Jesse Lingard. I thought, oh, that's going to be the end of them. They look good, West Ham. Antonio is a beast. If they can, they should fight for top four, to be honest. They, they're getting good results. They're, they're playing good football. David Moyes has done an absolutely wonderful job there. West Ham are a different kettle of fish. Now, having Europa League football in their back pocket, does that make it that like they're going to run out of steam towards the end of the season? Who knows? But for me, West Ham got to got fight for top four. Got to. Um, Leeds United... For me, I think the ambition is, I think it's got to be mid-table one more season. I don't think they're right to push Europe next. This is only their second season in the Premier League. They did really well last season. I think for me, another mid-table finish around the 10th, 11th spot. They can get that. I think that's good for uh, Bielsa as he's building a project with this Leeds squad. So yeah, that'd be good finish for them. Brighton and Hove album, it's got to be survive. It's got to be the ambition. I just don't see Brighton pushing up that table. They're a good run team, don't get me wrong. Graham Potts is a hell of a manager. He's doing the best he can with a limited squad. But I just don't think they have the players to get Europe. They've started the season well. They really have. But to mid-table Europe, I just don't see it personally. I think their, their ambition has to be to survive. And that's the same with Southampton for me. They lost their talisman, Danny Ings to Aston Villa, Premier League rival. Do I think Che Adams can pick up the slack? He won't get nearly as many goals as um, Danny Ings. And for me, if they can survive this season and build, that should be their plan. Burnley, also it's got to be a survival job for them. The, the Brexiters have remained in the Premier League for so long. And I think they just, I think now that the longer it goes on, the harder it is for them to survive in the league because I feel like they're not strengthening in comparison to their opposition. In football, in, in terms of all sports, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards because of the way it is, the relativity between teams. And I just feel like in terms of their competition, like look at Leeds, Brighton, I feel like they're strengthening more than they uh, than Burnley are. And I just think they need to survive this season, to be fair. Newcastle, I'm going to put a mid-table finish. I've got a soft spot for Newcastle. I really do think they're a good football team. I love the way their club is run. They've got Alan St. Maxwell, one of my favourite players in the league, honestly, I think he's he probably is maybe top 10 favourite player in the league, Alan St. Maximan. They've obviously got Joe Luke from Arsenal, I rate. I think uh, Newcastle, I think I really like Steve Bruce. He comes under the fire a lot, but I think he's a decent manager. I think if they can uh, get mid table, that, that's a realistic ambition for them. Like around the, when I say mid table, I mean around like the, the 14th, 15th, uh, like not 15th, sorry, like 13th, 14th spot. I think that'd be great for them. Crystal Palace survive under Patrick Vieira. They look shaky to start. The season, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Patrick Vieira has a lot of work to do at that team. If they, if he can survive this season, I think that's the plan. He's a new, young manager, of course. That's, they've gone the complete opposite from the Roy Hodgson route and gone for a really young manager. And let's just hope that he can survive this season because, of course, Patrick Vieira, Arsenal legend. I wish him to the best. My ideal league table would be Arsenal first, Crystal Palace second. But let's just hope for um, for Patrick Vieira and Chris Palace that they can survive this season. Brentford, you know what? I'm going to put Survive, but they've started the season really well. They're unbeaten after three games, look. Any any promoted team to be unbeaten after three games, you would absolutely snap. They would snap your hand off for that. Beat Arsenal, of course, start the season. A couple of draws since. I think Survive, they could push mid-table, but I think you've got, you got to be smart. You got to be, it's, not a, it's not a little 100-meter sprint. The, the season is a marathon. You've got, you're going to have highs and lows. They're on a high right now. And they will be in the lows and they see how they compete and how they push up the table when they're in the, in the low spots. So I think it really is an ambition. You've started well, but still your ambition should be to survive. As long as you stay in the Premier League, that's a W for Brentford going on to next season. Norwich, it's got to be a survival job for them as well, let's be real. Has to be. They're, they're, they're the worst team in the Premier League in my opinion. I know they're 90th Arsenal bottom, but they, they are. Against Liverpool, they started well. But they just had nothing up front, like no clinicality and defending wise, they're horrible. Horrible defending. I think they need they think they need to survive the season. Do I think they will? Absolutely not. But that has to be their ambition. 
And the same with Watford, finally. I think all promoted sides, your ambition has to be to survive the Premier League season. You can't get too optimistic and be like, oh, we just got promoted. Let's go for mid-table. Let's go for Europe. Right, nah, nah. Just survive the season and then build from there. Anything above survival is a bonus for promoted teams. And that's why I put Watford, Norwich and Brentford all there. Watford-wise, though, they've got Ismaili Saar. I really like him. I think he's a great footballer. Troy Dini left, of course. I think that was an L, to be fair. Like, even if he's not going to play games, just for his leadership in the dressing room and stuff, he's a veteran. He's been in the Premier League for many seasons. Of course, he scored one of the greatest football goals of all time uh, in the Championship playoffs. But I think it was it was a, it was bad to let him go. And of course, I've got the cycling GK Ben Foster, so I'll be looking out for Watford. But yeah, th that is my kind of power ranking type thing for like, realistic ambitions for every Premier League side this season after the first three games. I've had a little inclination as to what. Uh, each team is able to do let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments section down below and while you're down there please consider subscribing on my road to 600 i'll be wonderful and i'll catch you guys in the next video